Howdy, welcome to Sacred Mountain. Sacred Mountain Properties, Sacred Mountain River Suites, and this here book. This is our lives for the past 20 years. And let's just get into this, because it's wild. <clears throat> Sacred Mountain, living with CT in the Wild West. So topics in here, crazy real estate deals, including septic well and country evictions. CTE punch drunk symptom, uh, syndrome or brain damage is not fun. Inside is a CTE guide and a way to win. Real important. Real life standoffs and shooting incidents. Up close encounters with bear, mountain lion, boar, locusts, and much more. Aliens are real, and I include in them cell phone shots for you, which is cool. It's in the book. Anti gravity is covered. Even drew me a diagram for like all you sciencey guys. Ghosts are real. And it's sad when the departed can't move on. One of these here stories ended up on a ghost hunter show. The common sense country answer to all, answer to all the world's energy needs. It's pretty darn simple how it works. And they're taking advantage of us big time with all what they do to us. It's not right. Both fuel and electric is covered in one short chapter. Government scandal and insight into the insane world of general services. I used to work with them. A real life, it's like almost a whistleblower on that one. A real life treasure find with directions and pics. I left a fortune on up there. This is absolutely the craziest set of tales that you will ever hear. It is all true and has been called by some a beautiful love story. I'm going to read uh, how to client write this uh, who read the book before he bought from me. I sell ranches, by the way. Anyways. He said, five out of five stars. Buckle up for a wild ride in the Old West. It's hard to imagine that a zombie chicken, an alien abduction with potential AP, and I think I know what AP means, and I'll explain that later, which is funny. Gunfights, attempted murder by truck, cows in a septic tank, dogs in a septic tank, people in a septic tanks, squirrels using other dead squirrels as springboards to jump into marijuana plants, Haunted furniture, crooked government, spiritual awakenings, brain trauma, chasing out meth lads, a tra tragic fire, real estate deals, hopeless law enforcement, <laughs> God, angels, mother nature, jadeite heist, a gun slangy breastfeeding mama, my wife, with a gun in her boot, and so much more. Could all coexist in one book, but I assure you it is possible and has been done here and in, 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 in this insightful, interesting, inspiring, hilarious, Overall entertaining book and story of an awesome family man and his supported loving family out in the wild old west of California in the modern day. That was a sweet one, right? Man, it was like condensed writing. That guy got it. So uh, we'll just get into it here. I would like to do today the preface or preface. I don't know. Or, you know, America style, we just call it the intro. And I'm going to end you with this. Uh, this is a bookmark and it reminds me of the end of the book so I wrote when I passed I asked the universe there are so many names for God what should I call you I got a one word response mother so here we go Sager Mountain living with CT in the wild west preface preface or intro the reason I have always wanted to write a book, although I'm not sure why. I went to a writing college, but was never great, great, a great writer. I never had much to write about. It's hard to expound on interesting subjects or reports. Only recently have I felt a need to get all this down on paper. You see, as you read, while writing was never my best subject, but now when you will see as you read, but it's like actually me reading, so that was weird. So you will see as I read, that writing was never my best subject, but now I really have something to say. We have lived here for about 20 years in the modern day Old West, selling ranches and land with so many crazy adventures and stories that we find ourselves telling our adventures, stories, most days to anyone from customers to friends. I'm writing this book for my children and wife, 
so my boys will know who I really was as a person and my wife will finally know how much she means to me. When people ask me about football or point to my necklace, one ounce gold football hanging from my shoestring, I got a better string now. Uh, the only thing that I talk about is going back to play semi-pro later in life with my son. At 36, me and my eldest boy played on a semi-pro team. Logan was quite good and beat out a former Tennessee Titan for Defensive Player of the Month. Logan was a defensive tackle and I was an offensive guard, so we went head up all practice long. It was a short experience. The season ended with Logan and I collided. He hit the ground and I tore my chest muscle. It didn't hurt much, but the blood ran down my arm inside the skin like a growing bruise. That night when my whole arm was black we went in to get an x-ray to check it out while in there we could see that when i was hurt my arm was so when i hurt my arm so bad last year i actually broke the main arm bone in two i remember the play i stuck out my arm to clothesline a guy who was trailing the the running back through the hole i just made not too smart but we scored i didn't use that arm for a week but after a week i lifted on it and played in the next game that was a year before i played with logan <clears throat> it was really funny because there was the break and the doctor was like oh yes your arm is broken then he goes no wait that is an old break that wasn't set the funny part was that you wouldn't see the outside uh, the funny part is that you could see the outside of my body exposing my largeness funny on the x-ray x-rays show a whole lot breaking the arm sucked but not as painful as the tear but all it has always been that makes by the broken brain. So yes, the highlight of a lifetime of football was playing against my boy and now I get to worry about his mental health and treat my own. Shit, cry. I played for the time I played from the time I was a child until I was 36, off and on and have always been the hardest hitter on every team. Some would debate that, but you know. <laughs> Hardest hitter with my head. What an idiot. It seems like common sense now, but back then we had so much faith in them thin layer of plastic and hard forehead pad. The real liars are the bike and Rydell companies. They have the pain, suffering, and suicide on their karma. I played youth, high school, college, and semi-pro. I never made any money at it. I did have a real inspirational comeback college football story, but it's just overcoming pain and suffering. I don't need to glorify that. I have been suffering my entire life with problems relating to concussions in football. I attacked my first telephone pole at 16 years old. That really sounds quite funny that I say first. <laughs> the term CTE is the new term, but there have always been many others over the years for traumatic brain injury. In the 70s and 80s, they called it punch drunk syndrome. There is nothing happy or drunk about it. I suffer every waking hour. My brain will seize every few minutes all day light all day long, night two if I'm not asleep. I have oops, been treating myself with cannabis oil for the last three to four years, which was the, which was the sim, which was when the symptoms became more than just a bad temper and anxiety attacks. Almost four years back, I was experiencing so many crazy things in life with all the UFO contact, real estate, old west pressure, a moldy office, and at the time unknown to me, a broken brain. We all knew that I may someday have a problem with this. We saw the movie Concussion, and given my mental, ment medically and emotionally, given my history medically and emotionally, I figured I would be screwed up later in life. I had no idea this would be on me so early. I am now 44. I'm a little bit older now, but when I started writing, I was 44. So I guess that really got bad when I hit 40. For my entire life since puberty, I have been aggressive, intense, prone to anxiety attacks, and considered a bit crazy. I jokingly say that I'm on the small bus when I'm being nice to myself, and I call myself an all-out retired most of the time. My current symptoms include seizures without pissing myself, thank God, Parkinson's-like shaking, loss of speech, arm retracts, retard arm, confusion, and waves of brain-stalling pain, usually a F word or two. I got through that one while typing. When I was typing, I had a bit of a... My first major concussion was back when I was in high school as a junior playing on the varsity team. Back then when I really first started, that back then was when I really first started using my head as a tool to block. I would hit with my 
head and both hands at the same time, the trifecta. Yeah, right. I released inside the defensive tackle and hit the linebacker on my, and my own running back, ear hold me. When you get here from the side of the ear hole on your helmet, that's what ear hole is. My helmet spun around backwards. He hit me hard enough that it snapped the chain strap and spun the thing right around. I can remember my nose being squished to a point of pain. I pulled my helmet off and everyone and everything was standing sideways. It was, it was weird. It was like you took a picture on the computer and hit that uh, rotate button one time. Like, psh. I just stood there with my head cocked to the side trying to make sense of what I was seeing. Then I could hear the coach yelling, Smith, get back in the huddle. I was practicing right before a playoff game, so it was pretty in intense. So funny looking back now. Who cares about any of that? Hindsight is 2020, and back, in, back then the entire world was blind. I can remember telling the coach my vision was sideways and he insisted I finish the last of the plays. They just needed to go through a few more, suck it up. Then of course, I ended up in the hospital that night. I went through one of those tubes to take the picture of my brain. After it was over, the doctor called me and my parents back into the room where the TV had my brain up on, you know, on them, just off the side of the, t of the tube room, cat scan. The doctor said, uh, the doctor said looking right at me with my parents by my side that I shouldn't play football anymore. He said that, well, I can remember when he said he, but he pointed out different things on my brain from the concussion that were not good. He then told my parents that if I ever come back in with another concussion that he would ban me from playing football. I actually don't know if a doctor can do that. At least not at my age back then. <laughs> It was my choice and I decided to keep playing. My team needed me. We were in the playoffs. I was back to practice the next week and played in the next game. The doctor could give the grave advice of taking Pedialyte for concussion therapy. That was a tool I used for many years to come, never going back to the doctor, always reminding, reminded that they would keep me from playing. I had had well over 20 concussions over the years and was knocked out cold again at the uh, old age of 35. <laughs> When you're knocked out uh, a bit silly, seeing stars or knocked out cold, it is, it is the stomach ache after that lets you know you have a mild concussion. If you have serious vision problems, that's a major concussion. Had a few of them too. <coughs> the major ones include vision problems as well as the stomach and head pressure. When I was a senior, I took the SAT test only after playing in a playoff game. That was the following year. The test was on Saturday and I was, uh, and I was ready having taking the, the practice test pre-SAT the prior week. I was also ready for the playoff game on Friday night. Friday night, I was responsible for handling a monster bigger than me at 360 pounds. I remember his weight and what it felt like to hit him. I would hit him uh, as hard as I could, both head up and running at him, and he just absorbed the hit. It was a battle, and it hurt. By the next day, I was not feeling right. I can remember taking the test and being super dizzy. I guessed on a lot of it just to get through the experience. When I looked at, down at the answer sheet I did turn in, I noticed that it, I had been bleeding on the test. I didn't realize I had a nosebleed. It was, I was very lucky no blood got on the answer sheet. People were worried about AIDS back then, and I was more worried about what people thought of my, than my test. I turned the sheet in with one hand and walked out of the room with the other holding my nose shut. I scored a 950, which was good enough to get me into college only because I played football. The average at the school I was, that I went to was 1,200. Without football, I wouldn't have gotten into school, and with that score, I wouldn't have gotten into school with that score. But without football, what would I have scored? No, who knows? I do often wonder what my life would have been like if I would have listened to that first doctor. Was the damage done by then? Would I have been a nerd, rich, poor, who cares? I have a great life, wonderful kids, beautiful wife, just on the small bus a bit. I was on, it was almost four years back when I was picking up some items at the hardware store and down in Lake Isabella and was so dizzy I could barely walk. That would be about four years after the semi-pro with Logan. I had drivel driving back home. I was so dizzy it was like I had smoked something way stronger than cannabis. I woke up the next morning and couldn't speak. No matter how hard I tried to get the words out, I would just have my mouth lock open and I would... Uh, for a few days before, I was complaining about frontal brain pressure. 
I was saying to Wendy, my beautiful wife, I can feel my brain in there and it's not right. Like a vice grip on the front of my head. This was the first set of symptoms, the vice grip and loss of speech. It was hell. For three days, I couldn't get a word out. Trying to type to communicate was way too slow. <clears throat> what a thing to have happen to a real estate broker. We didn't know if I had a stroke or what the deal was. I was using the power of pointing and notes to help Wendy to contact my clients. I was just stuck without a way to move forward. While scrolling through the channels, I happened to movie on, I happened on the movie Casino. I had to see it and had, I had seen it and a handful of times, but it was the only thing on at the time, so I put it on. How crazy is, is that with all those channels and they get, and they can't put anything on that's worth watching, right? It's like all the channels, they watch old movies. Anything's, anyways, while uh, watching Casino, I happened to say F at the same time, the F word, at the same time Joe Pesky, and the word came out. It was then followed by some other cuss words. After about 20 F-bombs and some other more uh, colorful stuff, I realized I could make sentences as long as they had a cuss word somewhere in there. It was a bit like, shit, how is it going, Effer? Or, goddamn, what do you want for dinner? It worked for me, and at the time, I had no idea why. The speech itself was a bit slurred, but as long as there was a cuss word in there, I could get what I wanted out. This only went on for a day or two before I decided I would get on the cancer dose of oil. We had been living in the modern day Old West in our ranch for about 15 years at the time. Our four, four boys calls their for a, called their forever homestead at the time. Who knew? We had, bought, we had been involved in a few years back in helping a cancer patient obtain a special cancer finding cannabis oil that also is supposed to help with brain issues. They call it they say it can regrow nerve cells. It sure worked over the years on so many different cancer, different cancers that we figured out why we figured why not try it. I think it was Wendy who said, "Why don't you try your oil? It can't hurt." I immediately thought, "Oh yeah, at least I can be really high," and that was actually my first impulse for taking it. Over the years, so many friends and relatives with cancer say that they couldn't handle being as high, being that high all the time that they would call it on the news therapeutic yes it was a they call it therapeutic yes it was a therapeutic therapeutic that gave me my speech back it was a bit slow and slurred but i could get all the words out without cussing too much i was able to work for as long as it lasted that is the only problem with it i talk about now living on the oil clock after being after being on this for over three years, I perfected how it can help me. I take a dose of oil in the morning at 10 a.m. when my brain heats up and symptoms start. Then at 3 p.m. when the oil is gone and bad symptoms come back, I take another dose. That will only last for about half the time. Around 6 p.m., I turn back again to pain. And then for two years, I would drink wine. <laughs> it's no good. I actually tried absolutely everything had both from a doctor and not, and the only thing that gives relief without whole other side effects is cannabis oil. But it's not perfect, and life is a challenge. During these first two years, Wendy would help me with uh, real estate communications, and I would be on the oil clock, meeting clients and selling ranches. <coughs> we got by, and we're doing well working as a real estate team. It was not fun, though. No matter how I was doing, it was always under a clown of mental pain, cannabis and wine you know I have fun but there is never joy and it's so rare that I know the emotion too well which is really the most ironic because my life besides the sickness is really good over the last few years I've tried to end my life only a handful of times usually when Wendy and I are not getting along they say it's six but I only recall the good ones I do believe that people are destined for certain things and that when it's your time, it's your time, not before. But damn, you can sure screw yourself up, like seriously. Or at least that has been true for me so far. I can remember uh, the order of the horrible attempts at ending the suffering, so I will just start with the plinkster. I have 
a 22 rifle that I am proud of. It is my only gun. My wife is the real shooter gun person. So my fateful 22, I was giving up and took the rifle out on the back and start up the hill. We live on a 47 on a 47 acre ranch and plenty of room to be stupid. She attempted to get me. It was a horrible situation and I did pull the trigger twice. The gun jammed once, I unjammed it, and then it jammed again. At that point, I threw down and gave up in frustration. My wife was a real hero that day as she was willing to risk herself to stop me. A different time when I was low, I jumped out of the Jeep while we were driving down our own driveway. Kind of a pathetic attempt, but F, did that hurt? <laughs> stuck the landing. I used to just roll, you know, too stuck it. <laughs> I didn't do anything but make me sore. It didn't do anything but make me sore. I stuck a hose in my tailpipe and relaxed for a while. Wendy came and got the rescue that time, too. The best one was the cow. So, as the story goes, I'm not sure if I knew the cow was there. I was angry driving under the influence of medication and some wine and was in a panic. I left and was heading down south to my parents' house. I was driving way too fast when I got a call from Wendy that I left my wallet. In a range, I spun the car around and was speeding around 80 miles an hour across Walker Basin, and I hit this cow. One of the first lessons I learned in football was about inertia, the rule that speed and size are both factors in a collision. If you hit them harder than they hit me, it won't, I won't get hurt. That is true in some extent. I hit this full-size cow doing about 80, no brakes. The cow hit the front of the little Toyota Corolla and smashed in the front. The cow shit on the hood and its back hit the window. I was not wearing a seatbelt, of course, and my head hit the window at the same time as the cow. Because of the speed I was traveling, my head in the front of the Toyota took the impact of the cow and it was like we punted away the cow. The cow flew a good 20 feet off to the side of the road. The cow was dead, but I was just the same. The car was still running with half the motor smashed in, so I clanked it back to the ranch. I had a big hangover the next day or another concussion or both, and it smashed Logan's Corolla. Oops. You know, it's not the pain, the writhing all day. It's what I put everyone around me through that's so tough. I love my wife and kids, and they do not deserve to see me as a retard or hear me moan all night. That is usually the thought that brings me to that point, because you see, they are the only reasons worth fighting for. For anyone with CTE that wants the easy way out, I know that killing myself would do eventually more hard to them. Instead, I teach them to fight. I'm not a quitter. I don't quit when the doctors wanted me to, and I'm not now. So who cares if football glory puts you on the small bus? We're all still riding. During the time I visited a sports, during that time I visited a sports neuro something, a doctor that was specialized in CTE. He suggested many things that helped me. He, has, he had several football players who were seeing him, and there were a few things that he said that really stuck. Dr. Nixon, a good guy. He said that while I'm going through all of this, I'm able to get on the oil and have it, which most people couldn't even come by it or afford it if they did. <clears throat> and it's a good cure for a time. He also pointed out that my environment and daily life was contributing. That is really true. Nixon explained this like this. The brain will heat up and without the blood supply that I need, it overheats. Makes sense to me and helps when I am handling stress. Nixon let me know that cursing comes from a different part of the brain so that helping me speak actually made sense. When I was complaining about other doctors, he said the brain injury is really not that great and he equated it to looking at it, that uh, brain imaging is really not that great and he equated it to looking at your plumbing in your house from a helicopter. So seeing the little vascular issues is not really not possible. This helped me with my other doctor appointments. Doctors are not smart, not the smartest people, most of them. I got some really good ones to recommend now though. Most don't do problem solving, but they are so quick to say they know or prescribe. I have told doctor that I would be going to throw, I told a doctor that I would throw him out the window if he didn't act right. That was only after I was escorted out the building by security when I tried to see a neuro, neurologist in LA. This doctor came in the room and said, looks like I have depression. 
Then uh, we were told, we, then we told my symptoms and he pre-diagnosed my, and the pre-diagnosis of CTE. This little bastard said, oh yeah, what teams were you on then? I lost it and left yelling at him. Never touched a, that little excuse of a man, but the entire hospital police mobilized and escorted me out. One nurse uh, was chasing us and saying, I hit a doctor, which was a lie. When he got me out of that one too. Back to the good Dr. Nixon. He said that I should be happy that I have a cure and I can live with this. Most people can't. Basically, he told me, suck it up. And that resonated with me. I do a bit better, I do a bit better now than, I'm back, than back then because I don't drink anymore. When the oil wears off, I just take the pain, smoke more bud. I do still think about ending it, especially when there is too much stress. Stress is no good. CTE was first diagnosed in me by Dr. Vickery in Los Angeles downtown many years ago. He diagnosed me with Hulk syndrome. That's what he called it. Which was a great description for CTE. For about 20 years, I lived with the Hulk syndrome and was totally good with it. It is who I am. I have been that way for my whole life. It's when, CET seats, it's when CTE starts to turn into more serious problems. Uh, after you've had CTE for too long, then the small bus will come and get you. Recently, I had had an MRI. Don't ever take one of those. They're horrible. I am told that they can now see my frontal brain. I am told that they now can see the frontal brain damage. They call it chronic, but it has nothing to do with good butt. Don't worry, most quarterbacks, wide receivers, and them highly paid pretty boys won't have to worry about this. It's the linemen who get no glory, who get paid way less if they make it to the pros and do all the work. Kind of like our current society, right? <coughs> we looked at all those great people, but who have they really done? Who, but what have they really done? I have had a life full of crazy wild adventures, and the last 20 years of them are in this book. Football made... Me tough, but the mountain made me a man. 